Today we're going to start with a very simple demonstration. What I have here is a large beaker with some tap water in it. And I've added a white paper to the back so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better. What I have here would be two cans of Pepsi, or a can of Pepsi and a can of Diet Pepsi. And one of the things with the scientific method is making good observations. And this class is always great about making observations. And here we go, here we go, here we go. Well, let's start with, let's start with the Diet Pepsi. Okay. And this is just tap water. And we see that it does what it does. And so apparently it is going to float. Now we're going to put in the regular Pepsi. And as I get ready to do this in class, a lot of times I'll pull it back out then and say, what do you think will happen and force the students to predict. After you've done that a couple of times, they're really frustrated and want you to just hurry up and put the can in. But that draws them in. So here we go, here we go, here we go. Right. So part of the scientific method is making good observations. Obviously we have the diet is floating, the regular has sunk to the bottom. And so we're forced to try to make some sense of this. And typically students will perhaps have seen this demonstration previously, or they'll just have heard about it, or they'll just start throwing out terms that they may or may not be completely comfortable with. Most, most likely they're going to say something about density. Hey, it's less dense, dense. What do you mean by that? Please clarify. In many cases, they're not able to even state the two variables with, uh, in, involved in density, mass and volume, but they know something about density. And here's where, to make sure that everybody's on, on board with us with the concept of density, that we have a crystal clear understanding of the concept of density, we would make reference to the density equation. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. A lot of educational research shows that students can use these three terms, mass, volume, and density, and yet if you really push them on it, they're not able to make the distinction. They'll say things like, you have more of something, but that doesn't, well, which one? Is the volume larger or is the mass larger? These three concepts, while they seem very easy for most teachers, there's an awful lot of misconceptions as to which variable we're talking about. So now that we've seen in the density, or the, the soft drink cans, one sinking, one floating, the question, the logical question is why? What are we seeing, why are we seeing this difference in density? Well, the students who know who mention the term density will oftentimes be stuck when I say, but why is the density different? If we look at the volume variable in the density equation, if we look at the volume, we see that each can has a, or has a volume rather of 355 milliliters. 355 milliliters on the diet, and 355 milliliters on the regular. So the volumes are the same. So now what I like to do is I'll use a simple double pan balance. I'll put the Diet Pepsi on there. And then I'll say, well, if the densities aren't the same, and apparently they are not due to the difference in sinking and floating, if the volumes are the same, the only variable that can be different 
must be the mass. So let's have the students predict what's going to happen. And I tell the students, as I see it, there are three possible outcomes. One would be that this has a mass lower than the diet. One would be that this has a mass greater than the diet. And the third option would be that the masses are the same. I've always been surprised in every year there will be a handful of students who said the term density with complete confidence, absolute confidence. We've seen this demo before, and yet they will predict almost without question, with no hesitation, they're the same mass. In fact, one year I forgot to mention it could be either greater than or less than, and one-third of the class didn't vote. And I said, why are you not voting? Because we think the masses are going to be the same. Right, so I always include that as an option. Here we go. Diet is there, regular is here. No doubt about it. The regular has a greater mass. And so now that we know we've broken apart the density equation into its mass and its volume, the masses, the difference in mass accounts for the difference in the density. The logical question then is, why is there a difference in mass? What's different about the cans? Well, the, the cans themselves are each made of aluminum. Okay? The same volume, probably on the same manufacturing line. They don't have diet cans and regular cans. They have just cans. Okay? So there's something inside that's different. And here's where the students immediately jump on sugar and NutraSweet. Again, it's possible to do this as a very quick demonstration, but there's so much thinking that we can really draw from our students. This is early on in the course. We've talked about scientific method. We're trying to get them to participate and really be a part of the demos. So on the basis of what we see here, if we assume that the regular and the diet taste exactly the same, and I have to tell my students because they would love to spend the rest of the period arguing that they are not the same. Okay, but if we make that assumption that they taste exactly the same, equally sweet, whether it's with sugar or NutraSweet, on a gram for gram basis, which is sweeter, sugar or NutraSweet? Now, if we get inside their heads, the logic tells them, well, NutraSweet's a chemical. We've made that. There's nothing that's, no, you can't make anything sweeter than, than sugar. But yet, when we look at this demonstration, and we look and we say, well, if you're adding some sugar, you're adding some NutraSweet, the difference in mass, without question, tells us it must have taken more sugar than NutraSweet because the mass is greater. And indeed, as we look, we see 41 grams of sugar present, 41 grams of sugar present in the regular soft drink. 41 grams of sugar. For it to, this weighs less or has a lower mass, so it must take less than 41 grams of NutraSweet to provide the same level of sweetness. So most students are then quite surprised. NutraSweet is actually sweeter than sugar. But what really catches them by surprise? One gram of NutraSweet. One gram of NutraSweet has the same Sweet in, sweetness as 180 grams of sugar. What this means, and we see this all the time with, with products like Crystal Light. That's a, a very small quantity to make the lemonade. As compared to something like Kool-Aid, which takes a lot of sugar. So this 1 to 180 
comparison, we've seen it, but have perhaps not recognized it. Okay? So the 180 grams of sugar tastes exactly the same as one gram of NutraSweet would. That is very, very surprising for students. But we do get some indication of that on the basis of what we've seen on the balance. Definitely draws the students in. It's something that I think there's a lot of value in taking your time and really talking your way through this. Now, this might be how I show it in my chemistry class. A great test question. How do we assess their understanding? Well, a great test question might be something like this. In class, you saw this demonstration into tap water. We understood that the diet floated, the regular sunk to the bottom. A great test question. Here we have a saturated salt water solution. Now, I generally make my saturated salt water, which keeps from year to year in a milk jug or something like that. I use kosher salt. Kosher salt is wonderful because it contains none of the anti-caking type of devices. So I can get really crystal clear salt water that looks identical to straight tap water. The question on the exam might be, predict what will happen when I drop the regular and the diet into the salt water and explain your reasoning. And I'll just leave this right out during their test. And it's great to see them when they answer this question because they'll be looking at it, wanting so badly with their eyes, lift up the can <laughs> and put it into the beaker. What will happen? And that's pretty priceless. Now, your afternoon classes will come in asking in advance what happens. I was just wondering about the demonstration we saw two weeks ago. What would happen if you were to try that in salt water? But it really is something that's nice to see. Well, we can make a prediction, and they, of course, would have to explain that. And what we see is that they do, in fact, both float. And that probably confirms what they've already experienced in their life, that we float better in the oceans with the salt water. Again, if we refer back to the density equation, it's not surprising because the density of salt water would have the mass of the water as well as the dissolved salt contributing to that mass. And we see a typical density for a saturated salt water solution somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.2 grams per milliliter, which is much greater than tap water, which is typically about 1.0 grams per milliliter. Okay? So it's a great assessment opportunity uh, with, with the thinking end of things, because many times we do demonstrations and we always wonder, other than repeating what they have already seen, how can we ask them to apply that knowledge? Okay. Uh, it's a great connection to NutraSuite um, because most of them have seen that uh, product before and also ties together a lot of misconceptions regarding mass, volume, and density.